Welcome to Daughters of Reykjavik, the YouTube series. To quickly introduce ourselves, the Daughters of Reykjavik are a nine-piece all-female hip-hop collective from Iceland. In this series, we will be discussing a topic based on a song from our newly released album Soft Spot. We will discuss the topic among ourselves as well as with a female guest from the music industry. In this episode, we will hear from the band members Steinun and Steine, and our guest this episode is Rakel Mjöll from Dream Wife. This episode is titled Late Bloomers, and in it we will be discussing girlhood and puberty. My name is Sashka, and I will be your host. Enjoy! Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I have today with me two lovely ladies from our band, Daughters of Reykjavik, Steine and Steinen. So today we're going to talk about the first song on the album, which is called Late Bloomers. And that's just, the topic is late bloomers, basically. We're like teenage years, girlhood, social media, all these aspects that kind of sculpted us into the full-fledged women we are today. Woo. Look at us! Look at our tits! <laughs> they look at really me tits! Look at me tits! They came really late. <laughs> Very late. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, the first question I wanted to ask you is... Can I just say one thing about tits first? Yes. Yeah. Always. Because we went to the swimming pool yesterday, Sarka and I. Yeah. And I noticed that uh, Sarka was, she borrowed a swimsuit from me. Yeah. And she was like, oh, like... Oh, it's probably too big because your tits are way bigger than mine. And I was like, no, 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 that can't be. Your tits are way bigger than mine. <laughs> so we it's both like have a still conflict going on <laughs> in our head about being like having small tits or it's I don't so know. <laughs> I I am like one hundred percent sure your tits are bigger than mine. I think your tits are bigger than mine. This is gonna sure. be an ongoing feud. <laughs> well, it's funny, I had big tits when I was young, but I wanted to have small ones. Yeah, mm. this is, I think this is like... I wanted to have big this is how tits, it is all the time. like a good old porn star. Yeah. Me too, I wanted yeah. to have like huge titties. I think yeah. it's so funny that we start <laughs> calling boobs tits. I love it. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Titty. Breasts. My titty tits. No, I'm gonna call them, I just like tits. It just seems like a, such a like... Tits. Fun yeah. word. Yeah. Tits. 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 So like, uh, boobs. Yeah. Oomph. Boobs is also a good word though. Boobs. Boobs. It's kind of silly. Boobies. It's kind of like. Tits. I don't know. I just think of like the calculator. Mm. And, like, tits yeah. is more like aggressive maybe. Tits. But why did you want yeah. to have smaller tits? Just because I had big ones probably. Also because But like that's so perfect for the porn movies. Yeah. <laughs> to have big ones. True. And exactly. that's all I think about. All you <laughs> want. But I think it's like when you have really big tits or breasts mm -hmm. when you're young, mm -hmm. when you're like 13 or something, yeah. then you get super sexualized mm -hmm. super early on. Yeah. Also because By my- old man. I mean, like, it's also really hard yeah. to hide them. You always have to like wear really baggy clothes yeah. or something mm -hmm. if you want to hide them and then you're really like hiding off. I also felt like two shape. of my best friends were like 180 centimeters, very skinny, I'm not going to say anorexic, but very like that Probably kind of skinny, yeah. you know, and like no tits and all clothes just hanged on them. And I was like, I want to be like this because this was like the ideal yeah. or something. Yeah. Ideal body image. At yeah. That yeah. But now it, maybe if I was grown up now, I'd be like, mm -hmm. yeah. waist and booty. It. Like, yeah. yeah, it's sad. I think, yeah, when I was a kid, definitely like the body image was very much porn. Mm -hmm. It was very much extremely big breasts like american pie big, big breasts and mm. big ass and so being model as was not considered sexy at that point mm. i think mm. it was more like beautiful maybe or yeah. something if anything yeah. but when you're just discovering your like sexuality and everyone is like mm -hmm. their hormones are just like dripping off their clothes <laughs> 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 Yeah, but then I think it's like being b kind of pretty or beautiful was like eh, not mm -hmm. that important. It was mm -hmm. not. No, I just impressive. remember this um, this thought that I thought was just a fact that uh, because I didn't have big t 
tits. I'm going to keep on using tits. I love, I it. love tits. that word. I love it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have big tits. That it was just over for me. Like mm. I was just like, well, Doomed. I'm never going to have sexual intercourse because mm. I have small tits. My like first boyfriend, um, like I had a, had a boyfriend before, but that was like in seventh grade. Mm. So Tuna. Chocolate and tuna. Chocolate no, that's 11, boy. right? No, that was in oh, seven. seven. Mm-hmm. I got tits in the 11th grade. Yeah. Yeah. We're quoting the song now, you know. Yeah. We're quoting the song. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, but I, my first boyfriend, that was like we, we were going out for five months or something. Mm. It was like the first real boyfriend. Yeah. And we, uh, yeah, we were like, I was in the 10th grade when we were dating. He was in the 9th grade. And I was so afraid to show him my... I thought he would dump me if he would see how small my breasts were. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure like yeah. they weren't even that small. When I think about it now, I'm like, they were probably just like pretty similar to what they're now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just my idea was that they were like, a t- like he would figure out that I was a child if he would see my breasts. Mm-hmm. So he would like see me wearing my, I would at, at that time, I always wore a bra that I stuffed and then I wore a top over it mm-hmm. to like keep everything in place. So I always had like a bra the and then like paper. a sports <laughs> like a sports bra over it. Mm-hmm. So I had like two sets of bras and then like a bunch of toilet paper. So it was also like I was very afraid of him touching my fake tits. You know? mm-hmm. So I was my always like, no, it's like, please do not touch this area. And we like we were like making out for hours all the time. And I even like I think I gave him like a blowjob a few times or something. And In he never great. In 10th grade. Oh, in 10th grade. <laughs> get, your, <laughs> get your grades on point. Get your grades on point, yeah. No, but in 10th grade. And like, he never saw or touched my breast, but I gave him a bull job. Like, really? I was that aware mm-hmm. of, like, conscious of my of How my was that blow job, though? In 10th I think grade. horrible. I think a lot of teeth. Really? Like <laughs> I think I was just like, yeah, I think it was hurting him. I remember he was like... <laughs> <laughs> I've never talked about this like ever. <laughs> but, like, I think I remember him being like trying to hold in his like he like felt very uncomfortable, <laughs> I think. And he was trying not to hurt me. Uh oh, hurt, hurt mm-hmm. your feelings. Yeah, hurt my feelings. So you were bad at giving a blowjob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure I was really bad the first time. Obviously. I'm really good now. Mm-hmm. Really good. It would have been <laughs> very weird if you would have been really good yeah. at giving a blowjob. I remember doing it and then like going home and feeling really Oh, I fucked this. Like I did not do this well. Mm. <laughs> I know, but that's why it's important to have a conversation. That's why it's important to practice, you girls. <laughs> Go home and practice. Go <laughs> and practice. <laughs> Blow Otherwise, a banana. No one will love you. <laughs> and no, remember, I'm no just teeth. <laughs> mm-hmm. no. No, okay. This is horrible <laughs> advice. Just the yeah no, conversation. No conversation. I don't think we don't talked about it. Don't practice by yourself. Have a conversation with a but to person. This Always. Yeah. To this boy's credit, I remember him saying to me, like, hey, just so you know, like, with your, like, because obviously he noticed that this was, like, a big issue for me. And he was like, just so you know, like, I'm not going to judge you for your, like, if, if, uh, he was like, the thing with tits, if they are there, like, if they exist, they are great. Or, like, he was just like, it's fine if they're just, like, you don't have to worry about what shape or size or whatever like i'm just you know happy mm-hmm. to be with you <laughs> and why did you guys broke yeah. up break that's up. actually one of the best healthiest breakups i've had really yeah he like it was like really honest and really nice in a way because we had just been like growing apart and i kind of knew we were gonna break up and then he took me he like asked me to come to on the roof of Hagerskole, like of our grade school mm-hmm. um, or elementary school, and um, well, that sounds really romantic. Yeah, th- which was like the we went on like one of our first dates there or something, and he like asked me to come there, and then he was like, "Listen, Salka, like I'm really listen, Salka, listen, Salka, I really uh, like I think you're great and da 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 da, but I just have to, I feel like I have an obligation to tell you that I." I don't like you as much, like, I'm not as smitten with you as I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think, like, you deserve to be with someone that isn't 
he was like super honest and I I mean I was devastated but I was <laughs> still like really like I'm gonna meet you in person I'm gonna yeah make it in a do it in a place that's like meaningful mm -hmm. to us and I'm just gonna be really honest about how I feel what is this sounds like a very good guy yeah what is his <laughs> number <laughs> 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 what is he like doing today I don't know I, I don't really know mm -hmm. what today. I you feel like, all, I feel like, like all, okay, I shouldn't say that, but I think like all the cool bad guys in my elementary school are now like truck drivers or something. <laughs> and all the guys <laughs> who were like <laughs> late bloomers, they are like mm -hmm. toasters and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think he was... No disrespect to truck drivers, I think it's an... Fine. I'd love <laughs> to be a truck driver. <laughs> Uh, you would be a yeah. great truck driver. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. so too. I've mm -hmm. like this is not even a joke. I've no. thought about this mm -hmm. as a career path. For yeah. me. I love driving. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love driving big cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that much about cars, but like I'm. But you would definitely like get so into it that you would know everything in yeah. like a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You would be a sure. mechan mechanic. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, maybe I should do this. Mm -hmm. um, if everything else goes to shit. If everything the, else that you're working at right now, mm -hmm. yeah. Or if I'm just like bored, then I could maybe take yeah. a year off and just become a truck driver. Mm -hmm. well, that's fine. True, true. Yeah. My mom is like she has uh, made up of like a license to drive a bus. Mm -hmm. She knows quite a lot about cars as well. Yeah, she could maybe teach me some some stuff, um, some tricks. I wanted to. I had some questions for you guys before yeah. we start talking about titties. 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 Um. I wanted to ask you to tell me and our beautiful audience yeah. about one act of rebellion that you like performed <laughs> when you were a kid or a teenager. Like, mm. Preferably a teenager, but it can also be like young. <laughs> I was such a well-behaved kid. Really? Yeah, because I was so anxious. So that's why you're so fucked up now. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a late bloomer in the uh, rebellious Rebel. <laughs> act. But what's like the most rebellious thing you've done since you became an adult? Everything. <laughs> Everything. Every single thing. This band. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, probably this band. I went topless on live television. That was rebellious. Mm -hmm. That's pretty rebellious. Yeah, like the first one to do so in Iceland. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know on you live were the television. first one. Like it's not a movie, like not in a movie or no, like. No, no, no. But on but live, like television. live television. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Congratulations. And we'll go down in history. Yeah. Yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and just so we keep on talking about titties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but other than that, no, I was really like, uh, yeah, I was a, an anxious kid. So, um, and I'm an anxious woman, but now I have come a long way and like learned a lot about myself and like, have a therapist and stuff so I'm not mm. as anxious um, but yeah I just remember like I was the one that came to my parents and was like okay you guys now it's the time that I could start drinking mm -hmm. and we don't want me to go down that road do we so I have I have an offer for you I will not start drinking smoking or doing drugs until I'm 17 and you will pay for my driver's license because in Iceland you get your driver's license at 17. Mm -hmm. And they were like, because they were both like pretty fucked up teenagers. Mm -hmm. Like my mom, she stopped smoking weed when she was 14. Mm -hmm. She didn't start, she stopped smoking weed at 14. That mm -hmm. explains a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so they were like, yeah, all for it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when I'm saying it now, I'm like, I was kind of my parent yeah. <laughs> in this situation, you yeah. know. They gave me this contract, but. It was from, th they yeah. th said it to they me. They suggested it, mm -hmm. no. I don't know, I was the one who brought yeah. it up. And um, so I was very well behaved, but I was also just very uh, anxious about, you know, being out of control. Mm. I wanted mm. to have mm -hmm. control so I didn't drink much and stuff like that. Yeah. I was like in, what is it called, like the school you go to first till 10th grade? I've never, middle school? I think it's like, it's like elementary school, grade mm -hmm. school, middle school, and I'm never sure which yeah. is which. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let's so just, just say like, say an age. Yeah. yeah. Like, but just growing up in school, I was very, uh, education came very easy to me. And yeah. I always got 10 and everything without putting 
And having to put yeah, yeah, having to put effort and I was like dancing and playing the violin in a choir and did very well in everything and my parents were very didn't have to worry about me at all and were very proud and everything. And then I think in high school, like after seventeen, after the first year, I started I passed this contract <laughs> even though I didn't get the driver's license until I was like 20 or something mm -hmm. but <laughs> then I just started drinking and I and just like fuck school and mm. and that was also like I was never like I didn't have a boyfriend in in like until I was 17 or something and so that was also like going downtown and all of a sudden getting like older men guys attention and that was also a drive for this like lifestyle or something so all like my from maybe 17 to 19 i was like in a rebellion against this yeah perfect goody two shoes yeah, yeah, yeah. girl and I, now I sometimes regret not spending just getting tens in high in what's it's high school yeah, like mental school mm -hmm. yeah like not focusing on growing Sorry. that aspect aspect of myself mm. but you were growing your social aspect yeah true. but still with maybe I don't think I was still like growing my I don't think I was like giving myself self-love or something. Yeah. I think I was like looking for other people approval yeah, and yeah. guys approval and not and maybe getting more insecure because then I felt like mm. I wanted to be an actress and had been like working toward that for like my whole life or something. Yeah. But then I was like, I haven't been acting this whole uh, high school years yeah. or something and Kolfina and some of our friends had been in the theater group and done this so I was like I just have to drop this <laughs> I I wow. I missed my chance or something you know really I mean pe teenagers are so hard on themselves mm -hmm. that they we can't make any mistakes yeah. and then we're just like with our wit mm -hmm. we're yeah. completely knocking ourselves down I think yeah um but I think it's definitely, I mean, you have to go through a phase where you're like mm -hmm. making mistakes and like focusing on your social life and also just on your, like you're figuring out how to be a sexually active person mm -hmm. as well, which yeah. is like a really complicated thing to figure out. Yeah. And these years you are very like self-absorbed or Obs absurd. Yeah, obsessed or... Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like everything. Yeah. You don't, I did not like uh, take, I was not very considerate towards my parents and stuff. I was yeah. like, like my mother was w awake the whole night because I was sleeping somewhere and didn't let her know or something. And a weekend after weekend after weekend or something. And that's like, yeah. and I was like, so, and now I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I yeah. hope my kids is n will not be like this. <laughs> I remember calling my mom a whore once. Mm -hmm. I was like, "You're a whore!" And I like <laughs> ran out of the house and like. Mm -hmm. I think I maybe did that as well. Yeah. Called my mom a whore. Mm -hmm. I think I only called her a whore once, and I, yeah. I remember being really sorry about it. But I was a really like rebellious kid, but and also kind of a rebellious teenager. But um, but as a kid, it was like an obsession almost. Mm -hmm. I had to do everything that I couldn't do and and you were you told us about like you like took a decision not to eat or something like to see how you or like something like yeah. you were a strange kid right <laughs> yeah I was often like doing experiments on myself yeah like where I would yeah like let's I'm gonna stop eating for this amount of time and see like how my body reacts to it and like mm -hmm. if I can develop a way to not be um, dependent on food and then I'm not dependent on my parents. Like I mm -hmm. was always like trying to find ways to not be dependent on other people. Yeah. And I I also did it with like, I, f I had this belief that I, I wasn't affected by cold. Mm -hmm. So I would always like not like take off all my 
outerwear and like be like, no, I'm not affected by it, I'm not affected by it. And then just like kind of mentally um, tell myself that I wasn't cold. Mm -hmm. And like, which worked to some extent, but not like, I mean, I was still like probably cold. Like, you know, I was just trying to be this like master of my own mind or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And this sounds everything. like Axeman or something. Yeah, <laughs> this is like some very. <laughs> this is very yeah exactly like self obsessed behavior like having to master your entire like all of your moods all of your reactions and being completely independent of every like the idea when I was a kid I was super oppressed by the idea of not being independent like mm -hmm. and I felt. I cried and I was so angry about not being my own master, master like uh, about my parents just having a say in what I could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. So I was just, I was angry all the time. Like we were talking about the other day, like mm -hmm. my, I had like massive anger issues because I was just so incredibly oppressed by the idea of being a child, basically. I think yeah. I just like, mm -hmm. hated being a child. It's just I and then it's so interesting because then you like get into a relationship like at the age of what seventeen mm -hmm. and get married like as soon as you can basically yeah so then all of Maybe a sudden you're in it even more like I'm not a child anymore finally like uh. yeah mm -hmm. um, but still it's not like you go to be independent you go into a marriage not a cool thing okay yeah um. Yeah, exactly. Then you're already kind of signing off to someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is, f to me, my life has been very much like when I was a kid, I was the angriest, I was the most rebellious, and I was the most um, unhappy in many ways. Yeah. Like, I remember I went to a therapist to talk about anxiety, and he was like, do you remember being anxious as a child? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, most vividly. Yeah. So, like, mm -hmm. I remember most vividly being, I've never felt as many overpowering feelings as when I was just, like, in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And wow. uh, and then I felt like in my life it's just, like, gradually gotten more bearable. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that I've worked through each element. Um, so, which is very interesting, I think, to me now. That I'm like, uh, why was I so... Why did I have all these internalized extreme feelings when mm -hmm. I was a kid? Like, mm -hmm. what would make that happen? Uh, did you like? Did your parents uh, acknowledge them, or did they? Yeah. Did you feel like you were loved when you were bad? Yeah, I think like sometimes maybe my dad was a bit like, you know, I was I'm like their first child, so mm -hmm. some sometimes I think he maybe reacted in a way where he was like. Mm -hmm really angry and uh, we also fought often in a way that was like very adult like yeah. i i was fighting with him like we were on the same level mm -hmm. of intelligence mm -hmm. which is something i value a lot in general in conversation with my parents that we've always talked to each other like we're adults mm -hmm. and they talk with their kids like we are not stupid you know we're yeah. smart and we we are capable of under like figuring out something mm -hmm. so but i think it translated to like the way we fought and maybe had more serious discussions which sometimes can be like very overpowering for a child yeah um so i think that happened but they also were like they acknowledged that i had issues mm -hmm. and they i was seeing like a get like a like a shrink yeah i think <laughs> it's it's been a really nice chat i wanted to tell you about one funny story of yeah. rebellion. I like smoked a lot of joints on my balcony when I was a teenager and was, yeah, I was uh, s sneaked around a lot in my house. Uh, and, but I remember once being me and um, my friend Bowell, who is, who is one of my best friends growing up. She, <laughs> we like once got I think this is the first time I was left alone in my house because mm -hmm. my parents had gone somewhere with, I think, all my siblings. And for some reason I was there. I, I don't remember if I had like c 
class, like if we're doing lessons, like dance lessons or yeah, drum yeah. lessons or something. Uh, so I had to be left behind and I was like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. And then me and my friend decided to do like everything we were usually not allowed to do. So we like ate all the candy in the entire house. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and then we like did, a, we poured a bunch of water on the living room floor and put on, put like grocery store bags on our feet and then skated on the floor. And what? <laughs> yeah, I think it was How like- How did the floor take it? I think it was just really wet mm -hmm. and like, you did know. Did you clean it up? No. And then we went out on our socks because that was like something- How old were you? I think we were like 10, maybe. Oh. <laughs> I was imagining oh like God. 18. <laughs> oh. No, okay. No, we were like 10. It was like not like a teenage rebellion, but it was like a kid rebellion. Uh, and we, then my mom, like, they they drove in as we were like running away from the house wearing no shoes. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what the fuck are you doing? And we were like, ran as fast as we could. And then we like hid <laughs> for two hours or something, like just wearing socks and t-shirts, like no coats or anything. We're, like, and I was probably like, yeah, I don't feel cold. I don't feel cold. <laughs> um, yeah, it was very funny. Oh my God. That's, I don't think they trusted me with a house again for a really long time. Well, understandably. Mm -hmm. And I also- Pouring water on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> this was so like, we're gonna do everything we can do. Mm -hmm. I think it was like inspired wow. by something like Piffy Long Longstocking. Mm -hmm. did. Oh, I think yeah. you were too young to be home alone. This proves that. Yeah, they shouldn't. This, this is their fault. fault. Yeah. yeah. I approve. <laughs> I agree. They shouldn't have left you. <laughs> yeah. Then but this I, was the first rebellion. This is one of the first ones I remember. Then I remember, like, I, when I was in the eighth grade, um, I threw a party when my parents were. This is wow. the famous rebellion for uh, my parents. Was I threw a party where we like took so you were all 13. of thirteen. I was thirteen. I took all of their alcohol, and blended it in this like bowl, <laughs> with frozen. <laughs> strawberries <laughs> and oh uh, mm. I put like um, hostess up like cough syrup in no. it. No. I just put everything that had alcohol in it like cough syrup, vanilla dro like vanilla extract, yeah. vodka, Spritz. gin. No, not not <laughs> like I was like seriously Sanitizer. I was reading like the acetone <laughs> like nail polish remover like oh my uh, God. ingredients. I was like, oh, this must have alcohol. Oh my God. And I'm glad I did not put that in there. Uh, and then we, <laughs> then my friend, one of my friends who came to the party, she stole a vodka bottle from her parents. And then we had a party and everyone was like super drunk. And one of my friends had like her older boyfriend come over with his friends. And then we were all like, two of the girls stripped for them. And it was all very like, we were way too young. For, I was. I remember I was wearing like a bra with, where and like a shirt that was so tight that it was showing like the ends of my bra and this like really really short uh, shorts. <laughs> this is like trying to look like a person I'd seen in a party <laughs> in a movie. You know? And how then, old were the boys? They were like in the tenth grade. Okay. We were in the eighth grade. I think maybe the oldest one was like first grade in in high school. But did like, you just watch the movie 13 before you did this? No, I think we were definitely like thinking of ourselves as being like 16. Or yeah. Something, but not 13. Oh, you mean I like watched the ones that get... Do you remember this yeah. movie? Like, I, that was my, a very big inspiration for yeah, me. me I, f I watched this I and was like, I want it. to be like this. Yeah. Mm. It was like a it. two teenage girls, like very being rebellious mm. and... Taking drugs and Yeah, and sex. it's very like yeah. realistic. This was very much like, let's do that. Like now we're, it's also like when we came from grade school or elementary school and went to the next, like the kind of teen school, yeah. mm -hmm. which is, I, I can't remember which one is which, but like this was the first, cause from eighth to 10th grade, you're in like higher school, you're in like middle school or yeah. whatever. And then we, um, we thought of ourselves as like, oh yeah, now, we're, now we can party. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Everyone got super drunk, and one of my friends was like, "I'm just gonna be sober." And then she ate all the strawberries that were in the <laughs> bowl, and she got like by far the drunkest of everyone because <laughs> uh, they like absorbed all the alcohol. <laughs> and then, uh, then like, I cleaned 
the apartment like vigorously. Um, and there were like, I think one of my neighbors like came by the house at some point and was like, hey, what's going on? You know, there were a lot of things that obviously could, you know, get this party busted. <laughs> and then um, my parents came home and it was like super clean and I was like sitting in a couch when they came back. I was like, hello, welcome back from your trip. Like super <laughs> suspicious. And then um, they found a, somehow I like missed, there was one plastic cup with like pure vodka in it. <laughs> and they were like, what is this? And I was like, oh, I spilled some acetone, like some nail polish remover on the floor. And I tried to save, like it was just the most insane stupid plan mm -hmm. and they were like okay like obviously did not believe me and then i remember <laughs> being like brushing my teeth and then i spotted that like the finlandia vodka um cap was like on the counter mm -hmm. and i was like next to my father brushing our teeth and, I was, like, oh, my God, <laughs> and then it <laughs> turned out that the vodka bottle that my friend had stolen was like this something 70 years old you know, like a collector's item. No! Like a, yeah, she had taken like, <laughs> she would just be like, what should I take? And like, this thing that's in this like grand box, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, the, her parents came home and were like, oh my God, our, we've been robbed. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. our collector's vodka bottle. Like, what, one million kronen. I think it was like something like 70,000 or something. It was oh like, my oh god, like just like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, not, it's like pretty steep, at <laughs> least yeah. for like a thirteen-year-old, you know, shitty-ass cough yeah. syrup shit. Yeah, yeah mixed with cough syrup, yeah, and like <laughs> frozen <laughs> strawberries and vanilla extract. Yeah, <laughs> so it got busted because of that. They were like, they thought they'd been robbed, and then she was like, "I do it." I think it would be yeah. so fun to be able to see your teen years through your parents eyes yeah. like i was always smoking in my room and like my mother's like were you smoking in your room Stenner? no like <laughs> and then it's like of course they knew like you think you're like getting away with everything you think but so they smart. are like <laughs> yeah, exactly. what should i do and it's so unbearable that you think you're so smart and they're mm -hmm. like and they think you're like your parents are so stupid yeah <laughs> and they're like well i of obviously i know what's going on like yeah. it's so badly hidden and you know and our parents are all the generation that probably parted even harder than us or something yeah, exactly. <laughs> or earlier or something yeah. so they were like them it's i know my father said to his sibling like my children are not gonna drink and they're not gonna do sports or something like because probably because he like <laughs> did <laughs> i don't know i don't know why these two yeah. aspects or something but it's probably a little bit like sh seeing yourself through the eyes of your parents when you see your kid turn into a teenager yeah i think you're gonna the only thing i'm like i'm i want my kid to be able to tell me like you like or yeah. like i want to start drinking or something because i started drinking with and hiding, hiding it from mm. my parents. And, and I feel still like to this day, now I'm 30, and when I'm drinking alcohol with old, like my parents or my like boyfriend's parents or something, I still feel like I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Mm, it's very like strange. It. It's like, I'm like, oh, I'm not drunk. <laughs> 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 Maybe I'm just it, really like messed up. <laughs> I still feel really guilty when I'm like buying alcohol. Yeah. I'm always like, yeah. hello. Like, like ID, and I'm like, yeah, here it yeah. is. Yeah. Hope it works. And e I was even the kid that went to the alcohol store with no ID and was like buying alcohol. Like, no, For it's in my day. car. I don't bother to get it or something yeah, and yeah, light yeah. my way like when I was 17 or something. Yeah. I was buying the, wow. and going in front of the lines in Sometimes. clubs. Yeah, yeah. And being like, you should let me in like, a 16 year old or yeah. something yeah and now i'm like i choose me but can you can i pass <laughs> or yeah. uh I, I it sounds like you well it firstly sounds like you were not a late bloomer Salka. you were getting to the party quickly yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i was like uh physically physically really late yeah mm -hmm. but mentally very uh Early. I was mentally Early just bloomer. like, I think finally it was acceptable for me to be rebellious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Socially acceptable. Yeah. It was yeah, not yeah. like a problem anymore. Now yeah. it was like, 
socially encouraged <laughs> to be rebellious. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. not anymore like something that I had to, you know, I, uh, my yeah. peers weren't like crying because of my rebellion. Mm -hmm. But I feel yeah. like we have like three different types of rebellious here. You got rebellious very early. Mm -hmm. You got rebellious like 17. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting rebellious now. Yeah. I think like it's I tried great. drugs the first time, like mm -hmm. last year. Yay! <laughs> I love it. I'm but getting there. Yeah. I love to. Now I'm like just <laughs> like a suburban housewife. Yeah. Since I was 20 or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm still in this band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's your. I get my life. like. Uh, Utraus. Yeah. I feel like I'm just like falling more and more in line, which I love. Like mm -hmm. I love yeah. feeling more. Like I. I need belong. to get more crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. we all have missions. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we should wrap it up for this segment. Yeah. But it was really nice to talk to you guys about you too. rebellion and late blooming and mm -hmm. childhood traumas. Early blooming. Early blooming. Mm -hmm. Late blooming. Drinking. Any kind of blooming. All of this. Titties. Today. Titties. All them titties. Let's hear the song. Titties. Yeah, so we're going to listen to uh, a performance by us. Um, with some of the other girls in our band. All of them. All of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the girls in our band. And we're going to perform a song called Late Bloomers, which is the song that's inspired this entire episode. Mm -hmm. So enjoy. And then we're going to have a good guest after that, which you should be really excited about. She's awesome. She's awesome. <laughs> Go with the flow, go with the flow, yeah. 
Put my feet in the snow so you can watch me go. You don't have to the O, have to the O. just listen to Late Bloomers, which is the first song on our album Soft Spot, and which is the kind of conversation sparkle for the day. Um, and we're talking about late blooming and teenage drama and, you know, all of that. So we have a really great guest with us now that I'm going to introduce, Raquel. Hi. And Raquel, you are a part of Dream Wife one of the founders, and you are also, you've been in a lot of bands in Iceland, and like you've done a lot of... A few. A few. <laughs> <laughs> and like also just a lot of, I feel like you're one of these people that just does everything in your, you know, music career. And yeah, very inspirational persona in the Icelandic music Ooh. business, I think. Thank you. Uh, do you want to like introduce yourself more thoroughly? I guess I am sort of a late bloomer. Yeah. That's the theme. Yeah. Of the <laughs> I think it took me a while to actually find the band I wanted to be in. Yeah. And to to be able to try certain things and and actually realize that I wanted to be the one writing them. Mm -hmm. mm. Like it's so important to write your own songs. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a place in the conversation to write them. So mm -hmm. I think I'm late blooming in that kind of way. Like it wasn't until I was like 24, yeah. 25. I actually have a lot of questions. I wonder where I should start with those. I kind of want to start with maybe, because I wanted to focus this a little bit about like your teenage selves maybe, and like how you felt as teenagers trying to, or like late bloomers trying to um, maybe figure out what you like. And so my first question, I guess, is just what inspired you guys as teenagers? And like, did you have any role models that you remember vividly? Mm. And maybe someone that like inspired you to get into music or whatever you consider yourself to be, you know, maybe mm -hmm. just like art artists of any kind. Do you remember? Like Dolly Parton. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, do I you actually remember, like, do you have a memory of seeing her for the first time or something? Uh, yeah, I do. It's quite quite cute memory. My mom signed me up to the Imagination Book Club that mm. she has, um, which is a book club that now, I think, over a million people around the world get. Mm. So kids get a free book from Dolly each month if you yeah. sign up. And she chooses different um, types of authors, uh, like that write child's novels, and it's really, it's a really beautiful thing that she does. Yeah. And she's been doing it since the eighties. Cool. And I got her first book, which was her book. So when you signed up to the club, you got Dolly Parton's uh, Coat of Many Colors, and it's a beautiful um, book that is also by a song of hers, Coat of Many Colors, mm -hmm. which is one of her most known songs. And it's basically about growing up poor, but one is uh, only poor if you choose to be. Mm -hmm. And it's about the beauty of having, being rich within family, mm -hmm. but not rich with material. Okay. And that's the true value of life. Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. So for me, that was my favorite book growing up. Um, and it wasn't until like later than I listened to the music. <laughs> yeah, did you like relate to it? You know, this thing? Well, the character was blonde on the book, <laughs> and I grew up in California, and I was the only blonde kid besides my siblings in sight, so I did relate to the cover. But, I mean, like this philosophy of like... Yeah, totally. Yeah. Even today, like this kind of, it's basically about her mother making a coat for her yeah. out of patches that they got and pouring all your love and yeah. the stories of when she was sewing the coat together. Yeah. And then she goes to school and is made fun of 
Mm -hmm. But in that time, she also was like standing her ground yeah. Yeah. and being this code is worth way mo more than you think it is because there's so much love poured into it. Yeah. And I think that's a really good lesson to go into life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, because like I know this now. Mm. It's like uh, obviously is or not obviously, but um, yeah, love and like the care for people is so wor worth so much more than any iPhone or you know whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm just curious if you like uh, related to it at that age like when you were this young because yeah I guess um, I'm very fortunate with family yeah um, and even actually because we I came home when I was 10 mm -hmm. and the idea of Iceland was so um, for me it was like a snow globe because we only came here a few times because you know it was the 90s we weren't traveling so often because mm -hmm. it was expensive to yeah. buy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah but um, when we came back home, like the idea of grandparents and loads of cousins and nieces, like that was just, that was incredible. Mm. And that was, so that holding family uh, as something that was to be cherished. Yeah. My grandma also th thought it was quite funny because in America we had a very sunshine, go lucky kind of education from the school system as well. Mm -hmm. And she came to visit us once, and she was, okay, I wonder if these kids remember me. I've only met them like twice. Um, I mean, after they moved away, so I hope, you know, we'll connect. And apparently we met her at the airport, all holding signs, I love you, Granny. And, <laughs> and then just like the whole trip, we were just like little monkeys, like surrounded by her, like, I love you, I love you. Aww. And she's like, Icelandic kids don't say this. <laughs> like my other <laughs> yeah. grandchildren don't like, don't like <laughs> hang around me and say I love you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was very cute in that way that you're also sort of from the school system in California, probably just because of the really good weather. You're just always happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you're just happy. And this kind of idea of being like overpouring of love mm -hmm. and like sharing is caring was a sentence I heard the most throughout my whole childhood life i think this so is nice. might be the best thing that has like we have uh, how do you say it like taken from watching so many movies and tv shows from the u.s is that i think our generation is more open with es expressing their love uh, in yeah. words you yeah. think it's like i'm TV? always saying it to my son and he's like i love you you're so like <laughs> <laughs> so that's maybe the best thing that we have taken up from U.S. culture or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, because I don't remember my parents saying I love you when I was growing up. I don't it think it was a big like thing in the culture. No, no. no. in no. Iceland and it's probably not their parents. Mm -hmm. But no. I think it's very important. Like <laughs> I don't even remember my mom giving me like a lot of hugs or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just more like you go and be a strong, independent yeah. person. <laughs> 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 yeah. I did get a lot of like hugs and I love you's, but I think that was like a conscious decision that mm -hmm. my parents made. I, I, d I definitely have heard a lot of uh, Icelandic people talk about that they like didn't feel like the um, dynamic between them and their parents was very affectionate or yeah. you know actively. For me, I think caring. it was like affectionate, but it was not like you people they didn't say I. Yeah, like, yeah, like mm -hmm. I love but you. they expressed it and they hugged me and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. like, yeah, it's just <laughs> good. I can't well, imagine like not <laughs> being able to say it to my son. I think yeah. it's like a very strange thought. It I has a positive guess. thing, <laughs> like yeah. popular culture changing that. Yeah, yeah. like changing you say I love yeah. you mm -hmm. to your kids. Yeah. yeah, maybe that also like affects. Um, when we are growing up, we always like have to look for this approval or this like, mm -hmm. like is he does he love me or something? Do, do they like me? Do they? Yeah. Like maybe that's part of it. Like yeah, for how sure. we. I have like it's because I am used to saying I love you a lot of times a day. Mm -hmm. Like I say it to my mom every time I leave the house. Yeah. And my dad and my siblings. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to saying like I love you 
20 times a day or something. And then with it sounds so nice. Which is great. Mm -hmm. I love it. But like then I, with my boyfriend, he's like not used to it at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I say like I love him very many times a day. I'm always like, yeah, I love you, love you, little. And he's like, oh, wow, it's so... <laughs> and he finds it very uncomfortable to say what unless he's like really feeling it at that moment like mm -hmm. it's not that he's like not doesn't love me anymore but like he just feels comfortable saying it in situations where he's really like right now i'm feeling like really mm. loving and affectionate towards you mm -hmm. but not just like oh i'm heading out i love you you know he feels <laughs> like that's just he just he feels like it's a miss use of the word or something mm -hmm. which to me yeah <laughs> just really like i don't know that's also but you love him every day of the week I know, but I, I think that was also re really interesting that he has this, like, really, really... To him, this word means so much, yeah. so, like, charged, because yeah. it's used only in situations where it's, like, it necessary to use. heard it once from his parents. I like think I he's heard it more often, but, like, <laughs> I think he just associates it with something that's, like, oh, yeah, the, in this moment, we are, yeah. like, actively showing each other mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for me, it's just, like, oh... I love you all the time. Like, yeah. I love you less sometimes, or something. Yeah. You know, but I'll still tell you I love you. Yeah. I had Bye, a partner I like from. You. I had a partner from uh, the Faroe Islands, mm -hmm. and you, that you probably know who is. But that was. Um, we do. You do. <laughs> we were so young, but um, that was a very interesting because that's even cl like more closed, sure? closed yeah. than Iceland when it comes to the affection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really. And. I remember when we were starting uh, hanging out, and he once he once came to me. He was like, "Rakel, you're good to me. Like I'm good to you." And I was like, uh, "Yeah, sure. Yeah, you are good to me." And then he said it a few times under this kind of like, like, "I'm good to you," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> and then I asked another friend of mine who's fair. Faroese. No, yeah, and then uh, eventually, because I'm, you know, Californian raised, I was just like, I love you, I love you, and, and then like, <laughs> eventually he was like, I, I, I love you, and it was so hard for him to leave his lips. Mm -hmm. Then I met another Faroese friend, and he started explaining this to me, and he, I was like, yeah, so yeah, he, he said I love you the other day, like that took him like a year and a half, and he's like, what? We don't say that in Faroe Islands. <laughs> how did you how did you manage to make him say that? <laughs> yeah, no. And he's like, in the Faroe Islands we say I'm good to you and that equals the same as I love you. Yeah. <laughs> so like apparently when you're in Faroe Islands you're like, I'm good to you. That that's like the deepest meaning of love. Deepest expression. That is so that's weird very to say strange. though. That's like what, Because that's you? like stating the obvious like I'm good to I'm you. I'm good to you. It now, would rather now be like, it. you are good to me. Like, yeah. or something. It's very <laughs> fancy to be like, I'm, I'm good, good to you. you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's even so way more closed off in this kind of affectionate it's way. It's like, I'm a prize in your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky to have me because I'm good to you. <laughs> but like being so hard to say those words, like, yeah. I'm good to you, was mm -hmm. difficult to say. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think we have it okay here. Maybe it's changed also with de generations and popular yeah. culture that mm -hmm. that you yeah. aren't afraid to say I love you to those who are closest to mm -hmm. you. Wow, this is really, really interesting. Tell mm -hmm. a fairy's person that you're good to them and see how they react. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm good. Hey, I'm good to you. No, I really want to go to the Faroe Islands. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, we've been. My friend is there actually. I should message her and tell her like to pick up guys that are walking around being like, "I'm good to you," <laughs> and then <laughs> grabbing their crotch and being like, "I'm good to you." <laughs> um, thank you so much yeah, for coming, so much Raquel. Coming, Raquel. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, see you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace love. Peace and love. Peace and love. We're gonna see a music video. Uh, or something from Dream Life. We haven't decided yet, but you're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Fuck, sorry, fuck, please will you so kindly start again.
Smash it. 